want certain butterflies, you have to have the host plants for them. Hey everybody, Rob Nelson here at the Kaleidoscope Butterfly Garden at the North Carolina Zoo, and I want to talk to you about how you can create a butterfly garden, how you can attract butterflies to your own garden. Let's start with the basics. To have butterflies, ideally you want to plant things that attract them as adults, and that means flowers they like to feed on. In addition, you want to have plants that the butterflies will lay eggs on and the caterpillars can then feed on. This is to complete that life cycle. So let me walk you through some of the steps that the zoo is doing here. And then at the end, I'll show you what you can do in your own garden. First, here in the Kaleidoscope Butterfly Garden, you'll notice it is full of butterflies. I counted two dozen species just on this trip. I have not seen this one before. That is so cool. Now, to help feed the adults, they have nectar stations like this. Some adults feed on fruit, but the majority feed on flowers which are planted all over the place. And one thing you'll notice is that you'll never see a caterpillar in here, and that's in part because they skip this phase. They buy them as chrysalises and then they metamorphize into adults in the display. It's actually really cool to be able to see them turn into adults. We receive anywhere from 250 to 350 a week. Um, and we hang them on dowel rods, so very gingerly gluing them to the dowel rods and then we monitor them throughout the week for emergence. So we just make sure that they're good and ready to come out um, and live their lives amongst the buffet of plants that they have here. <laughs> right. All of what you see here has a behind the scenes component and that takes place in the greenhouse complex. All right, you gotta check this out. This is the greenhouse complex and inside they have a whole bunch of plants that they're growing for the butterflies. My goal here was to get a feel for what kinds of plants they're growing for the butterflies and why. This is a type of salvia. This is the blanket flower, the galardia. They're one of our very early bloomers. It's a uh -huh. mechanasia over there. Garden flocks, more lantana. It's very easy to grow. It kind of almost like a drier condition as well. Yeah. And what I noticed is that many of these plants they're growing here, you can already buy in your local nursery. In fact, I went and planted a few of them in my yard afterwards. Here's the Indian blanket, my Coreopsis, and my butterfly bush, all of which have been attracting butterflies all summer long. A lot of times you go past houses and you just see the urban landscape with the blah, with the lawn that's just beautifully manicured and shrubs just prune in perfect little shapes. You're gonna to have to like lay off the pesticides for sure, because if you, you spray any pesticides, you're gonna get rid of them because mm -hmm. they're insects. It will wipe them out. So flowers over grass. Yeah, flowers over grass. Lay off the pesticide. Lay off pesticides. Pack it with flowers. You gotta pack it. <laughs> and pick a sunny spot. Yes. That seems simple. And definitely choose natives as much as possible. Now, I didn't want to leave all of this without touching on the most famous of all North American butterflies, the monarch. Besides just having pretty flowers in your yard, you have to think about what kind of butterflies you're trying to attract. Now, everybody's probably seen the monarch, and so what I want to look at now is the flowers that would attract the monarch. The monarch butterfly is famous in North America because it migrates from their overwintering grounds in Mexico up to Canada and back. And to make these huge migrations every year, the adults need both nectar and plants for them to lay their eggs, which happen to be the milkweed plants I'm looking for in this garden. Do you have milkweeds here? Yeah. So we walked around this garden, paying special attention to the growing milkweeds and other plants that will help the monarchs. Oh, there we go. Yep. So this plant that's right down here, you break off the stems, white sap. That white sap is toxic. And that's what the monarch caterpillars are feeding on to make sure that the birds don't eat them. Absolutely. And milkweeds are absolutely critical if monarchs are gonna survive, especially if they're gonna survive their migration and if they're gonna survive as a species on and on. As our population grows, we're also losing places where the milkweed could grow. And that's why it's really important for people to also plant milkweeds. So I hope the take home for you is that it's not rocket science. There's a lot of butterflies that need flowers and the more you know about which ones like which, the better, but it's really simple. Just go out, start planting flowers in your yard. Big thumbs up to the North Carolina Zoo and everything they're doing to try to encourage different schools to create their own butterfly garden, creating monarch way stations. It's all fantastic stuff. If you have a butterfly garden, I'd love to hear about it. Leave your comment down in the comment section below and we always read them and we'll see you in the next video.